Jesus, God bless you. Get the choir. Love you like that. God bless you. Kids are very powerful. They are tiny, but very powerful. Tiny keys open big houses. The Bible says I've set before you an open door. I didn't open it for you. I didn't force you into it, but I set an open door. There's a way that seems right to a man. The end of it is destruction. That place you're going that the Holy Spirit tells you not to go is not where you have the open door. The clique you are getting to that is affecting your fellowship with the Holy Spirit will never be the way out. I've set an open door. It's a see. Because men may not see. See, I've set before you an open door. Doors don't answer to familiarities. Oh, it's my house, it's my car. They answer to keys. There are keys with which you open doors. If you notice, the Bible says, I've set before you an open door. It means you have access. He said, I'll give you the keys of, not to the kingdom. Because you know that Jesus is the key to the kingdom. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No other way. Jesus. So when he said keys, no wonder he said of the kingdom, not to the kingdom. So Jesus is the way to the kingdom. But when you enter the kingdom, that's why the Bible says, except you're born again, you can't see. Except you're born of water and of the Spirit. And we understand that the water is the word of God. You can't enter. So there are things you won't have access to in the kingdom if you don't have the keys to those things. And I don't mean to confuse you. That's why you can see someone who's a prayer warrior and he's broke. And you're wondering, is God not good? Because the key, the key to prosperity is not the key to prayer, to having a, a good prayer life. That's why you can see someone is heaven bound and his marriage is in shambles because the key to having a good marriage is not the, I'm telling you, I'm not summonizing. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Just observe your key. You notice that the key that opens your car is not the key that opens even the boots. It's not the key that opens your house. Say, I own everything. The key, the same key, should open everywhere. No, it doesn't work that way. In the kingdom... What requires blood, you don't give it palm oil because the two of them are red. Pretense don't work because all things are naked before God that we have to deal. Things don't work if you don't work things. So the, I want you to, first of all, think about the area you need to work on, particularly this month. If you look at John chapter 1, I want, I want you to read from verse 46 when you get home, but because we don't have time, I want you to read from verse 51. This is the story of when Jesus met Nathaniel. Philip had met Jesus and had gone to invite Nathaniel to the ministry of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ began to operate in the word of knowledge, began to talk to him. And Philip, uh, Nathaniel was so thrilled. He said, wow, how did you know me? And Jesus said in verse 51, he said to him, most assuredly, I said to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It seemed to me while I read the scripture that God is saying after this fast, after this prayer, after what you heard, what you hear tonight, after what you hear this month, hereafter, in fact, read the message translation of verse 51. Message translation. Three days before this is over, 
Can you see that? Can you see it's talking to you? Before this is over, you are going to see heaven open. Before this message is over, in the name of Jesus, you will see heaven open over you. If you believe it, shout a louder amen. So what, that, what does that tell you? It tells you that you have a responsibility. God had promised us that there will be open doors. If you look at Revelations 4 and verse 1, Revelations 4 and verse 1, Bible was speaking, they said, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Some people operate with short doors and they're born again. They're wondering why things aren't working the way they ought to work. And I'm not sermonizing. This is what happens. And please, I want you to examine yourself critically. You may be going through what I'm sharing. You may be going through what I'm sharing. Don't spend another day operating with short heaven. Now, I'm not talking about a lifestyle that you don't have challenges. But if it's consistently like that, something is wrong somewhere. God has not called you to that kind of life. He's called you to glory and to virtue. Temporarily, things can work. Things can happen like that. But if it's consistent, we need to stop and ask ourselves honest questions. Where have I gone wrong? What have I done to open the door for the enemy? What have I done to shut the door? Because God has called you to an open heaven. There's a door that Christ has. If Christ is the way and you have Christ, why don't you have the way? If it's the truth and the life, it means you're not following the truth. So you can't see the life. He was talking to living, breathing people. I came that you might have life, which means it's not this life. It's another kind of life. A life without stealing, a life without killing, a life without destruction. That is what we are entering into. Now, Christ didn't just promise us now. It's been done from foundation, from, from the time he died for us. But he prophesied through, your, through his servant that this month, there's an open door for us. I don't know about you, I'm entering into a new dimension. New horizon. In the name of Jesus. If you look at Deuteronomy 28 from verse 23, I've told you the best way to look at Deuteronomy is to look at the word, the throne, your enemy. He said, your heavens, which are over your head, shall be bronze. That will not be your portion. See, don't think things are happening generally. When you, some people, they just say things. Oh, Nigeria is, but do you know right now, people are doing things in Nigeria. <laughs> An Ilori man was walking past our building, the, the one we're just building in Ilori. And he said, ah, I, I wish I could, I wish everybody understood the Ilori dialect. And he said, eh, God is with these people. In this time, in this economy. Because just in three weeks, the building went up. <laughs> you know, when you are building, you have to wait for some things to kill. That's the only reason why the building is delayed, not money. <laughs> in fact, somebody told me, he said, Pastor Beard, what do they need to finish? I've not answered it till now. Have you seen that before? I know something. Listen to me. And the person is not, does not attend learning church. He said, what do we need? Sincerely speaking, I don't know. But I could have asked the pastor, asked the engineers, but I just felt, no. Not now. <laughs> because the individual has done things before. I said, let others do things. I also want to do things. But you see, how we got here was someone was passing by the property. I said, ah! Just in two weeks, because then it was two weeks. They do it. He said, God is with these people. And he said it in the learning dialect. Mark my lips. 
If you do what God is telling you to do, this year, people will marvel at your progress. People will marvel at your progress. Some of us will beat ourselves and say, ah, I've been wasting my time all this while. <laughs> Something new will happen to you. Amen. That amen is not correct. Amen. I am so sure that amen is not correct. Amen. Your heavens which are over your head, not our head. Because what you're experiencing, not everybody's experiencing. I'm telling you, some people just pretend. And some people, what is happening to them is too much. They can't pretend anymore. It's showing. You know you can't cover smoke. It will come out. I don't even know where to face right now. <laughs> your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under shall be iron. Could it be that somebody has a covenant with God and is operating like this? The heaven over your head is bronze. You are tilling ground and it's iron you're hitting. In 24, verse 24, the Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. From the, heaven, it, from the heaven, it shall come down on you until that person, not you, is destroyed. That will not be your portion. Amen. We looked on Sunday about uh, at Jesus Christ when he was being baptized. In, Math, in, in, in Matthew 3, when he approached, approached John, the, John the Baptist, John the Baptist said, ah, no, I'm the one that should be baptized by you. And Jesus says something I want you to think about. We don't have time to deal with it. He said, let it be so for now. It's amazing how that medical students think they're going to be students for life. Engineering students think they're going to be engineers for life. They may like the money, they may like the, the, the glamour that comes to the office, but the way they behave is as if they will be under that lecturer for life. But God has given an example of Jesus Christ. He said, let it be so for now. It's a temporary thing. Therefore, I want to say this ahead of time. Whatever you need to do to begin to operate under open heavens, please pay the price. It's a matter of destiny. It's not something that you just... Uh, it's, just, it's not just a walkover. You see, some of you don't know what I'm talking about because things are going away with you. But some people have tried. They fast. They work hard. And they are in Christ. In that aspect, everything is not money. Some people have good jobs, but in the aspect of marriage, they are strong. In fact, people have concluded that if you are beautiful, you don't have luck for a good husband. Because in that family that I know, everybody there is beautiful. But look at their husband. They're all divorced. There's some things you've embraced in life. But of a truth is because somebody is dealing with a closed heaven. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Ah, whatever it is. If you've not seen a better example around you, whatever it is, you will come out this month. Tonight you're coming out. Tonight you're coming out. In verse 16, the Bible says, in verse 16, Matthew 3, verse 16, when Jesus had been baptized, he came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, not to everybody, to him, to him. People who have been baptized, you know what happened to them? They were just wet. But Jesus Christ was baptized, and something happened. Heaven opened. And the Holy Ghost descended. He didn't start his assignment until that time. The Bible says the Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness to fast. And suddenly he returned with power. After the service, you are returning with power. You receive a clear direction. You know what to do. Never again will you be confused. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. It's not only individuals that have this issue. Even communities where people are from. In Amos chapter 4, I want to read verses 7 and 8 to you because of time, but I give you the assignment to read to 11. I also withheld rain from you, 
when there were still three months to, to the harvest. Who, who can guess what will happen to the, to the crop that is about germinating? Three months to harvest. It will die. No rain. It will die. Heat will kill it. I made it rain on one city. If you are not one city, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I will that rain from another city. Okay? So don't think what is happening is general. Some people just pretend because they don't want you to kill them. <laughs> they don't want you to kill them with requests. They pretend like they don't have. They pretend like it's not happening to them. But sincerely speaking, some things you are complaining about, some people don't smell the complaint. They just pretend. How can it rain in one city and suddenly it doesn't rain? You know, one thing that, I, that really concerns me about this scripture is the last part of verse 7. One part was rained upon, and where it did not rain, that part withered. Verse 8, this one is deeper. Two, two or three cities wandered. Somebody say migration. <laughs> to another city to drink water. Can you imagine how many times you, you drank water today? I assume you went to uh, Abaji to drink water and to come back. You can imagine. Yet, um, but they were not satisfied. They were not satisfied. Yet, you have not returned to me. I pray in the name of Jesus, whatever it is that the devil is using as a ladder into your marriage, into your company, into your business, into your financial life, into your spiritual life, is broken today in the name of Jesus. It's broken today in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about circumstances that things are dry. Things are not working. I talked about something and I really mean it. I want you to think about it. If you're experiencing promise and fail, near success syndrome, if someone promises you, they fall sick, they die. Bam! Huh. It's a pointer that you need to take it seriously. Instead of you to blame the devil, blame demons and say, oh, the demon of my father's out, why don't you adjust that thing? That of forgiveness in your life. That promiscuous lifestyle. That lying spirit that's taking over your life. Why don't you adjust? You are in Christ, but you are allowing the things that are supposed to be old to come into your life. And they are shorting the happenings of God in your life. Everybody envies you. You have a way to cover with facade, but you know that you're not doing well. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, maybe you talk about people. I don't know what it is. One thing I know about the Holy Ghost and I trust him is that he will reveal to you what you need to adjust. You may choose not to. You may agree in this service and go back to reset. But I pray in the name of Jesus, anything the enemy is doing to reign supreme and to to, to contradict what the Bible says concerning the new creation over you, it has ended tonight. Amen. Let it catch fire tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Closed heaven is not something you joke with. Please, I beg you. It's not something you joke with. Please pay the price. It concerns destiny. Let me give you a fast example because I don't have time tonight. I want us to pray tonight. And the reason I'm sharing with you is that I want that prayer to be effective. Very short prayer, but effective prayer. How many are going to pray tonight? You know, at the time of Ahab, 1 Kings 17, 18, 19, Jezebel was his wife. If you wanted to take contract from the Asher Rock, you had to worship uh, Baal. You will come to church and worship God, or you will go in the evening to worship Baal if you want a contract. And Elijah said, Why do you oscillate between two opinions? I says, If God is God, serve him. If Baal is God, then serve Baal. Nobody answered him a word. Are you here today? You are standing between two opinions. You are not worshiping something literally, but there are things you hold higher than God. You can come to church and, you know, look down on everything we're doing, but there are things that, are, that you hold in high esteem. 
Anything higher than God is a worship of that thing. As you do that, what the devil will succeed in doing, despite the fact that you are born again, despite the fact that Christ died for you, is that you will not be able to enter into the fullness of who you are supposed to be in Christ Jesus. You begin to struggle. At some point, you will think maybe they are lying with testimonies. You think, you think everybody is there. They're just pretending because there are some things not happening to you. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Apart from what I share, there will be a deeper revelation on your inside. The Holy Ghost will teach you. It will teach you to profit. It will show you what to do. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. You know, there was a time Agar was sent away with Ishmael. And she was in the wilderness. And she didn't have water. She was crying. And suddenly, as, she, as the, the lad was crying, God opened her eyes and she saw a well in the desert. That is what will happen to you after the service. Yeah. God will not dig a well for you. God will open your eyes. Yeah. You will see provisions. Yeah. You will see solutions. Yeah. You will see next level. Yeah. New horizon. Yeah. If you believe in shout hallelujah somebody. Yeah. I prayed before I came here that hell shall bow before you. Yeah. The voice of hell shall be shut down. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. God didn't make you to suffer, to, to suffer like this. God didn't make you to, to be stagnated like this. There is something you need to adjust. So Elijah has shot the rain for three and a half years. God told him to go and show himself to Ahab and prophesy that rain was going to come. And he went to Ahab and said, rain, it will rain in this, in, in this, in this country again. But you know what happened? It didn't rain. Elijah had to do something. He had to put the altar in place. He had to pour water. You remember that? He had to kill the 450 prophets of Baal. If you don't do that, rain may not come. Pastor Bernard, do you know we are in grace? Exactly. Paul says, shall we continue in sin? And I expect the grace of God to happen. He said, God forbid. It will happen. Don't be deceived. It will not happen. It will not happen. Anybody teaching you grace in a warped way, let him live the way you are living. And let us give him six months. Because short heaven is not a product of you making a mistake once. It's something God has been warning you about. And you keep going back to it. In fact, what the devil wants in our lives is a short heaven. Let me quickly say this. Don't judge your brother. Judge, don't judge your sister by saying, ha, hmm, I wish sister Sarah heard this message. No, you are the one I'm talking to. You are the one I'm talking to. Because yours may not be lost of the eyes. Yours may not be lost of the flesh. Yours may not be pride of life, but at those three points, because all that is in the world, all the devil operates with are those three things. When the Bible says Jesus was tempted at all points, yet without sin. At what point? Three points. Three points. There were some things Jesus Christ couldn't be tempted with. He couldn't be tempted to beat his wife. He never had a wife. So when you say at all points, if you meant he was tempted with every sin, you are a liar. But the three points with the pride of, if you look at the temptation of Jesus Christ, when they took him to the pinnacle, when they told him to turn stone to bread, when they told him if you are the son of God, jump down, they represent the three points. Pride of life, loss of the eyes, uh, loss of the flesh. When he was hungry, it was his flesh that was hungry. Come on, talk to me. Don't think Christ was not tempted. Mary Magdalene was beside, Ma, uh, was beside Christ. Don't he? He resisted, yet without sin. Satan came to him and found no God. So you may think, oh, my own is not women. My own is uh, not men. My own is, no, I, I, I just do business. And you don't have integrity with money. You are falling. The same fall. At, the same, at, at three different points. I don't know which one is yours. 
That's why the Bible says, let us run the race with patience. The Bible says, we should lay aside the weight and the sin, which so easily beset us. Hebrews 12, from verse 1 to verse 2. How do you know the sin in your life, the one that so easily besets you? There's some things that can come your way. You can't be tempted to do some things. It won't, it won't be a temptation. It's not your thing. It's not your forte. It's not, it's not something you, you dig. Do you know some people, they can do anything to be greeted. They can do anything. In fact, they're serving God is not because they love God. It's because they want to have the right, people want them to have the right perception about them. The devil is very smart. We have to be on guard. My prayer tonight is that any area that the devil wants you, uh, that God wants you to put in place to shut out the devil, that area, in the name of Jesus tonight, you will, the blood of Jesus will block that area. The enemy will not tem torment you again. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. Elijah repaired the altar. He repaired the altar. You must go and repair the altar. Some of you don't read your Bible anymore. You don't read your Bibles anymore. You don't pray anymore. Have you prayed today? Answer that question on your side. You did three minutes prayer out of how many hours you have spent today. You didn't even pay your tithe. I'm not talking about money. Tithe of time. You didn't even give God. I gave my life to Christ in the days when the revelation of just give the Lord a wiper, just go, just go away. And people are giving God wiper. Just give him a wiper and go away. People didn't pray. I just had somebody that was very faithful to God that raised me up. We will go into the bush and pray. <laughs> it was in those days I saw different kinds of praying methods. <laughs> just see someone by school, school field. It's just quiet. You didn't know that someone was there. Just say, Jen! Different prayer methods. Have you prayed today? Do you walk with the Holy Ghost? The kind of Christianity you're running, is it such that God can pull you back? Or you're going to end up the ditch that your father, your brothers, your sisters entered? pray in the name of Jesus that all of us will not hear this in vain. Amen. The enemy will not pluck the seed of this word from our hearts Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. What causes heaven to close? I will share a few with you. I will, whenever I get to, I have a whole month to share this, but I want us to pray. First of all, the heart of man Closes the heavens. Hearts of men. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 16. Say, take heed to yourselves. Lest your heart be deceived. <laughs> now, Bible is not talking about don't sin, don't do this. It's talking about deceit. Like if they put an, a, a, a gun or they put a knife to someone's neck, it will say, no, this thing is white. It's deceived. So there's such a thing as someone's heart being deceived. Maybe before the devil did what he did in your life, he first of all brought deceit. He made you believe some things. He made you have a kind of philosophy, a belief system, a worldview. Because bondage comes with thought pattern. The weapons of our warfare are not kind of, but they are mighty to pull down strong, casting down what? 
thoughts, imagination, and every other thing that exalts itself above the if you are here today, you do the word of Christ, you accept things in your you think there are things you should. You know, the Bible was written some 2,000 years ago. You see, we need to improve. I'm progressive in my thoughts. You're already in bondage. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. Yes, Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, not a jot or tittle of my word shall pass away. Let me tell you something. This will help you. Before you existed, human beings had existed. Don't spend the rest of your life Finding out how life ought to be lived. Just follow the Bible. Because when you are 80, you wake up and realize that the Bible is true. I read a book and I listened to the uh, audio tape of the book. Voices of atheists when they were about to die. Most of them, <laughs> they were shocked what they saw before they died. Are you alive, somebody? Don't wait. Because it may be in hell. Somebody will wake up. And that will not be you. In the name of Jesus. Take heed. You must be careful. There's some things you just... Some of you don't know that. They sit down and create TV series to change your mind. Some of you don't know. You don't even know what is going on. You don't know there are two kingdoms and they are fighting for you every day. You don't know that the spirit lost it after the flesh. The flesh lost it after the spirit. They, they both desire to have you. <laughs> you don't know. Some of you don't know that there are few families that control media all over the world. You just see something on challenge, you jump on it. They are saying one slang, you jump on it. You don't know what is going on. And I don't intend to speak to you like I'm prejudiced. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And I know I'm talking to intelligent people. Somebody called me from the UK, uh, a member of this church who relocated to the UK, and saw something. I, I don't have the liberty to tell you. Saw something. And called me and said, Pastor, this is what you've been talking about. I just saw it near my house. It's true. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a satanic move. I said, well, my prayer is answered over you. You keep seeing what I've been saying. There's somebody, they went to search his house in the US not too long ago, and they showed this child escaping. And... On the, on the tie of the, of the child, you could see the logo of Illuminati on it. <laughs> this world is not normal. See, if you have success and you don't belong to any world, please, which after the service, tell me which one you belong to. I want to know. I want to know. If it's not happening to you, it will happen very soon. There will be a trouble you will enter. You will need solution. And that's how they will pull you. I've been in situations before where people from the other side called me. And I'm not lying to you. Pastor Bion, if Christians don't want to support you, we will support you. I ran away. <laughs> people who work in the church office can bear witness that on that signboard, there were more than, well, I didn't count them, up to like 10 people with head, head gears. <laughs> you know what that means? People from the other religion, they came to this church some four years ago. And they said, we came to encourage you. <laughs> I took off. <laughs> if, you don't, if, you, if you don't stand where we are. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, my grandmother will tell, me, will tell me, what I'm telling you now, put it on your left palm. Use it to eat. Yeah, don't use it to eat. Just, just keep it. There's some things I'm telling you, you don't need it. You don't even understand what I'm telling you. Just keep it. Just keep it. Because I know in front of me are successful people. Are people God will use to build the kingdom. And you cannot build anything kingdom with the kind of way you think. You can't dine with your adversaries and be against them. 
When you carry something they know will destroy them, they attack you before you discover yourself. Take it to yourself. Lest your heart be deceived. Take it. Lest your heart be deceived. Let your heart be deceived. And you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. There's a young man who was attending a church. Wanted to get into an industry. And the mom took him somewhere. And he started doing jazz. <laughs> I shook my head. I, I'm thinking, how does he have? Before you take me to hell, I will give you conditions. Number one, I want to be Obama's friend. I want to have breakfast with him every day. Then I don't want to walk. I want to go <laughs> to the... <laughs> I'm going to hell. You're not even against Guzabe. You want to go to hell. Bible says if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, it's still not a good bargain. Come on, talk to me. What do you call the movie and the, the music awards? What do you call it? I want to be there. Every year, I want to get two, two awards. I'm going to hell. My God. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, take it to yourself. Some of you are too cheap. Ordinary suya. Can take you away. So. And you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. <laughs> I grew up with one guy in the neighborhood. He's older than me. He's like an Egmo in the neighborhood. So he went to London, but before, he, he, before the, the, the girlfriend joined him, the girlfriend somehow, because I was very close to them, told me to take something and send it to somebody. <laughs> Turns out that it was uh, a soothsayer. They wanted to send jazz to London. <laughs> I'm telling you a true story. I, I, I don't want to tell it to you in such a way that you can trace who I'm talking about. In case somebody's listening to me right now. Somehow, the, the lady did jazz to marry him. After I became a pastor, that guy came to me, Lauren. I saw him. I looked at him. I saw his house. I saw what he had. Now, the report was that the guy beats the girl every time. The devil can give you a free gift. You marry him, but every day, you're a punching man. The guy doesn't know the story, but I know the story. I knew, even though I didn't fully know what was going on at the time, but I knew what she did. That was why when Jesus Christ was taken to a mountain, and the devil said, I will give you the kingdom of this world and his glory. Jesus said, mm, 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 mm. if the devil takes me to this mountain, he has to maintain me. No, I'm not doing. I'm not doing. Now he said, I will give you the kingdom of this world and his glory. In Matthew 28, 18. Give it to me. Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and said, all authority has been given to me. Where? In heaven. And where? The devil only offered him earth when he waited. My God. Could it be that what the devil is trying to offer you right now is inferior to what God would have given to you if you waited and did things right? Elijah repaid the altar. Paul the sacrifice took the prophet of Baal out. If you don't do that, do that so that time of refreshing can come from the Lord. If you look at Deuteronomy 11, 16, that it says you turn into, take it to yourself, lest your heart be deceived, and turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Verse 
17, lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain and the land yield no produce. And that person perishes quickly from the good land that the Lord has given you. Everybody has a good land. When you hear land, please don't look at a physical land. There's a media land, there's a banking land, there's an education land. There, there is a land, there is a wife, there is a husband, there is a job, there is a destiny God has prepared for you. You can't get there by following the route of the enemy. I pray in the name of Jesus, your heaven will not be shut. Yeah. Any temporary stagnation is out of your life. Yeah. Let me pray for you so that you get the balance. Any tree that my father has not planted in your life may be out. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, I don't want to belabor this. I have, a, I have a short time to share this word. God is a jealous God. God, see, there's one thing I want to encourage you never to be part of. It's called apostasy. Don't go to any, in fact, even a pastor that you're not sure of. A place where the cross is upside down. They give you water. They, they say, bring coconuts, bring this. Where's that in the Bible? Even read Sam, Sam into water seven times. Where's that in the Bible? Wake up. Don't be deceived. Familiar spirit can tell because they are familiar. They can tell what is happening to you, but they can't help you. They will complicate your matter. So when we can begin to pray, as the Lord leads us, if you've been to those places before, even put your, your, your foot down in that place. Some of them take your glory. That's why when you, when you dream, you don't even remember your dream anymore. The giftings of the kingdom God, have, God has placed in your life, they collect it. I pray in the name of Jesus, anything the enemy has taken from you is coming back. Yeah. How do I know when the thief is found? It shall be made to restore sevenfold. Ha, tonight, in the name of Jesus, you are coming back strong. I love your amen. Can it be louder? First John chapter 5, verse 21. First John chapter 5, verse 21. Hallelujah. First John 5, 21. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Keep yourself. Keep yourself. New Testament. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Your phones. Some of you, you worship money. Ah, my brother, anything for money. You know, it sounds normal, but you are going into idolatry a little bit. Anything that competes with God in your life is an idol. There's a place you, there's, there's a way you are raised, re raise yourself. Anything that was shot ever over you in the name of Jesus, we command it to be out of your life right now. Yeah. Why? God wants you to fulfill destiny. And you can fulfill destiny that same way you're operating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 12 and verse 9. Revelation 12 verse 9. So the dragon was cast out that serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So there's a devil on earth that deceives the whole world. They, 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 they I, I think the devil is so consistent with some things. I was part of Christianity when Christians, you, you had to evangelize. It wasn't that they forced you in your church. No. You were, you were so excited with the light you carried. An average Christian, you couldn't see three Christians without one guitar. Yeah, they were always singing. People would come to them and say, you're so happy. There was a, there was a wave in Nigeria. In 78, 79, I met it in 83, 84, 85, 86. I was part of a fellowship in 86. You can imagine a fellowship where 
Bishop Bodibu was there, Reverend George Adibui was there, all of them were there. I was a drummer. My God, we saw things every day. No closing time. <laughs> My God, I can never forget one day. There's a pastor, I won't mention his name, he's going to be with the Lord right now. He came, they invited him from Ibadan. And somebody vomited freshly. I'd been to a baptismal venue before. And they put a sister there. I still remember the name of this sister. This sister floated. My God. Instead of us, saying, hey, hey, Instagram, hey, bloggers. No, all of us, we started praying. Rabba Kashatan. Until our pastor said, Lima, the demon, Mami Wata, demon, get out of there. Ah, that was the move. <laughs> she, I, I was a teenager. She floated in front, before my eyes. She floated, she was gone and floated on water. I was there. My God. And my pastor kept on baptizing people. When he was ready, he cast out the devil out of her and she went down and we took her up. My God. All through the time I was a young person in that church, when the sister came to say, eh? the sister that floated in front of me. My God. Talk about power. I've seen power. <laughs> From today, in the name of Jesus, no more closed heaven. Ah, as you bind it to be bound. As you lose it to be loosed. Do you know there are Christians that when they have a need, it is met. But you are praying, praying. It does a thought of a need is, is done. Praise God. You'll not be deceived anymore. I say you'll not be deceived anymore. In Hebrews 3 verse 12, Hebrews 3 verse 12, I have a lot to say. Beware, 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 be careful. Be, be on guard. Brethren, they were born again Christians. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. My God, in departing from the living God. You say, Lord, I'm evil. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm, I'm going to backslide. Say, leave me alone. <laughs> we, when when I, I think that was 1987, I, I was part of a group. The guitar was... Taller than me, I was a bass guitarist. And we, 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 we sang a song. Power for the end time move. My bowels. On uh, a day before, a preacher preached on my bowels, my bowels. My bowels, my bowels. So we composed a song in school that day for the convention going on. And we played reggae. Power for the end time move. Power for the... Now, it's normal to you. Then, it wasn't normal. One guy, I won't mention his name. He's a pastor. <laughs> I saw him recently. I saw him. <laughs> Praise God. He just came from the congregation. He just took the microphone from us. He said, this is what is happening in America. This is rubbish. This is demonic. This, this. He, he, he told all of us to go out. I remember Reverend Victor Adeyemi was, he was, he was, he was uh, the president of the, of the fellowship at the time. We had a church, but the fellowship of young preachers, we went to, that was 1907. And they came out to beg me. I said, from today, I'm backsliding. <laughs> ah! <laughs> eh? No, I mean, there's this like that. No, from today, as I'm going, I'm backsliding. <laughs> They begged me. I said, no. No. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> Lest there be in any one of you. Do you know for many years I struggled? I mean, when a preacher was preaching, I knew where I was going. My pastor was worded. There's no scripture. There's nothing you break. I know where you're going. I prayed sometimes in the morning, say, Lord, I'm going to this church. Let the pastor say something I've not heard before that will make me get back. I couldn't get back. 
I went to a convention in Shobo. No, 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 Elisha. I was going to, my wife and I were driving behind somebody to go to their house around the axis. And he told, he had told us, I will branch in a place just to say hello to them. Please, I want you to drive behind us. And I saw the man. If he knew what he did to me in 1987, even I've forgiven him. But I'm telling you, sometimes you think, oh, what I'm going through is legit. What I want to do is legit. Uh, I, 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 I've tried. I've... No. <laughs> if you go back to come back, is very hard. Very hard. You see me sharing personal things with you right now. Because I want you to get it. I don't want you to leave this place thinking, oh, he's a, good, he's a good preacher. No. I want you to get it. Therefore, anyone here that is deceived, maybe you are a Christian, but you, you want to go left. Maybe you're planning to do something this week because you just think everyone helps those who help themselves. I'm, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy wants to do in your life is aborted right now. You will not depart in the name of Jesus. You will not depart in the name of Jesus. Let me read to verse 15, verse 13, verse 13, Hebrews 3, verse 13. But I have, but exhort one another daily. Daily. As we talk about football, talk about music, talk about what is happening in your country, when you want to end that phone call, pray with that person. Pray with that person. After this service, the right friends, the right uh, people will come into your life. I'm not talking about people that after fellowship, they say, let's have another fellowship. No, 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 we're not talking about people that just, people that need help themselves. You can't give what you don't have. I'm talking about you having spiritual people. Not just uh, making friends with people that carry bags, people that have money. You're looking for people that can stand with you in prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus. Anybody here that has been alone, God will set you in families. Amen. Today, lest any one of you, he said, exalt one another. While it is called today, lest one of you be hardened through deceitfulness of sin. Again, he says that. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence as we are steadfast to the end. 15, while it is called today, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of rebellion. As I'm speaking right now, people, mm, well, I agree with it, but I still want to hold, you see, in demonology, if you want to hold your demon, there's no anointed man that can cast that demon out. But if you say, hey, you know why they kill thieves? You know why they kill thieves? When they catch them and they say, hey, surrender, and he wants to fire back or run, they kill them. Right now, just raise up your hand and say, Jesus, take me the way I am. I want to operate under an open heaven. But if you, if, you, if, you, if you pretend you want to keep it, you want people to think you're spiritual, such people live dead. Today, if you hear his voice, how do not you heart? Had it not your heart. Okay, let me show you a few scriptures more. Let me give you one more point. But before I give you another point, Matthew 24, verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 4. Jesus answered them and said, Take heed that no one deceives you. On the internet? <laughs> Take heed that no one deceives you. They pay some people to drive a certain, certain campaign, thought pattern. You just see, they say, ah, okay, okay, that's my celebrity, that's it. Be careful. Take it that no one deceives you, okay? Hebrews 10, 22. Hebrews 10, 22. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm out of time. And I really want to exegete and show you Second Chronicles. Let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of what? Of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. 
Our bodies washed with what? Pure water. Pure water. Verse 23. Let us hold fast our confession. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Instead of you to go down, thank you, Jesus. Oh, things are working for me. You know what will happen to you? Heaven will open. But if you go and because you have a temporary setback, you go and do something. What happens to you when you go to those places that they mess up your life? And you go and join one prayer group, one, some, everybody is doing prayer group, even those who need prayer. You don't need more activity, you need more results. <laughs> Let us go fast, a confession of hope without what? Wavering. For he who promised is faithful. You see, that keeps your heaven open. And you say, well, I don't know what I'm dealing with. Well, he who promised is faithful. He's faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Number two, I will stop on this. Disobedience. Disobedience. Please allow me to take like 15 more minutes. Is it okay? Disobedience. Second Chronicles 36. I want to read to you from 22. Second Chronicles 36. I want to read from 32. Now in the first year of Cyrus the king of Pasha. Oh, I wish I had time. You remember that Jeremiah told them in Jeremiah 29, tell your children to marry, to give birth, and their children to give, to give birth. Ah, they say, what kind of prophet is this? No more prophet should come and prophesy us out of bondage. But you are telling us to stay. You are not a real prophet. He said, no, I'm a real prophet. For I know the thoughts that I think concerning you. The thought of peace and not of evil. So that that word, all the things he prophesied, might be fulfilled. Suddenly, an Eden king, Cyrus, he just proclaimed. He said, you know what? I have a feeling. I want to let the slaves go. If you want to build, feel free to go and build for your God. Let me read it to you. So the Bible says that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus the king, an unbeliever king of Persia. So that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. And also, he put it in writing. You remember the law of Medes and Persia. Verse 2, verse 23. Thus says the king of, uh, the king Cyrus of Persia. All the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord God of heaven has given it to me. And he has commanded, not suggested, me to build him a house in Jerusalem. At this point in time, the wall was broken. While Nehemiah was building the defense, Ezra was building the temple. Are you following what I'm saying? Zerubbabel was building the temple. Ezra was teaching them the law. Are you following what I'm saying? So, this king now said, anybody, any, anybody in captivity that wants to build for the king, for God, should go. Who is among you of all his people? May the Lord is God be with him. Let him go. It was on this premise that people left. People left thinking, saying, and claiming they will build for God. Let my people go. That they may do what? Lounge in the wilderness? That they may serve me. It was on this premise that God fought their enemies for them. God stirred up the king, the heart of the king, to release them. Now, Ezra is after 2 Chronicles. If you see Ezra chapter 1, verse 1, I want to read to you from verse 1 to 3. You see the same thing there. In Ezra, now in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, the word of the Lord, that the word of the Lord might be fulfilled, the things I, wrote, uh, I read to you, the same thing was written there. Because Ezra was teaching them the law. Now, in Agai chapter 1, Agai chapter 1, now, Cyrus was dead and gone. Another king came in. Now, when they got to Jerusalem, oh, I wish I had time. When they got to Jerusalem, they now met some people there. The people that war did not carry away. 
they had to get married. They had to bear children. All Israelites, the men, were carried away. So they had to marry Gentiles. They gave back to the people called Samaritans. That's why Jewish people hated Samaritans like anything. In fact, they didn't even pass through their city because they reminded them of their sin. Because it was their sin that made them to enter into captivity. So when they got to that place, to Jerusalem, they now found out that, ah, Israelites got married, they had children, they had Samaritans, half Gentiles, half Jews. So the people were carried away by their nation, by their constitution, by their economy. They had legitimate reasons not to do the reason why they left captivity. Come and talk to me. So in the second year of King Darius, you can see another king. It was a long time God gave to them. Just like God has given you a long time right now. The sixth month, on the first day of the, of, of, of the month, the word of the Lord came to Aga, Agia, if you're an American, or Aga, if you're British. The prophet to Zerubbabel, because he was building, the son of Sheltai, the governor of Judah. And to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, <laughs> the high priest, say, verse 2, thus says the Lord of hosts. These people say, you know when they got to Jerusalem, they said, it's really not time to build. We are not here to build. We are here to build our nation. We are here. They entered Instagram. They, started, they became influencers. They, they forgot the reason why they came to the kingdom. Oh, maybe I should face these people. Pastors, I know you will receive me. These people say, it's not time. The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. <laughs> that was the reason why even the unbelieving king released you. Verse 3. Then the word of the Lord came by Agia, the prophet. Let's choose the American. It is, is it time for you yourself to dwell in your paneled houses? And this temple lying ruins, the reason why you came from captivity, the reason why I released you. Now, therefore, says the Lord, consider your ways. In case you want to title this message, it is called Consider. You are. Don't, 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 don't speak Bible English. Consider you are ways. Verse 5. Now, therefore, thus say the Lord, consider your ways. Verse 6. You have sown much, so they were hardworking. They got to Jerusalem, they saw virgin lands, they started farming. You have sown much. And you bring in little. You eat and you do not have enough. Does that sound like what someone is going through? You drink. Does that sound like what we are going through in Africa? We have resources. We have all sorts, but we are not satisfied. I don't even know where to face now. Choir, can I face you? You clothe yourself. But no one is warm. Sit down. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put in their bags with O's. Is never enough. Verse 6, verse 7. Thus say the Lord, consider you are yes. there is. Look at your neighbor. Help me preach to your neighbor. Say, consider you are. Yes. Verse 8. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. Be obedient. That's the meaning. For them, they wanted to, they had to build the temple. What has God spoken to you? What have you agreed with God? In the days when you didn't have anything, in the days when you needed help of God, the help of God, what did you tell him you were going to do? What are you doing right now? Did God bring you to Abuja to be living the way you are living? Did God give you that job to be living the way you're living? Maybe you are streaming this service right now. You have one, you are listening to me, one here, another here, you are busy with something else. Was that how you started with God? Did God increase you and promote you to make you be like that? Consider you are... 
go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple. He said, you look for much. But indeed, it came to little. When you brought it home, I blew it away. I blew it away. <laughs> Why? Says the Lord of us, because my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs his own house. Verse 10. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold you. This is how I did it. And the earth withholds its fruits. Verse 11. For I called for a drought on the land and on the mountains and on the grain and on the new wine. And whatever it is. He said, he said, I, I, he said on all the labor of your hand, I call for a drought. In case it's still raining. What I did was that I made you to run in the spot. You sweated, but no result. Because of time, go to chapter 2. Chapter 2. When you get home, just read just two chapters. Just read, read everything. You, 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 you will love it. You will love it. Hallelujah. Because of time, first of all, go to that uh, John 151. John 151. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said to him, most assuredly I say to you, hereafter you shall see heavens open. After now, you will see heaven open. You see, if I pass the microphone for everybody to tell their experience, we will not leave here today and you'll be shocked. You know, one day, a man of God said, write your problem in an envelope and put it on the stage. And when they got on the stage, the man of God said, pick another envelope that is not yours. Let it be a prayer point. When the person opened it and saw the content of the problem, he said, hey, give me my own. As faces are different, needs are different. We may look trendy, but people are going through several stuff. But I pray that after now, you shall have a new testimony. What you bring home shall, shall satisfy you. Never again shall hope be in your, in your purse. If you believe it, shout amen somebody. As individuals, as families, as community, in the name of Jesus, things will happen for you. Yeah. Sit down quickly. Let me show you Agai chapter 2, verse 15. Agai 2, 15. I'm going to round off right now. I want to read from 15 to 19. The Bible says, and, care, and now carefully consider from this day forward. From this day forward. Ha! Ah! From this day forward, from before, before stone was laid upon stone in the temple of the Lord, from the time you, you obeyed God's word, from the time you lifted up the knife like Abraham and said, Lord, I'm going to stop Isaac. And he said, no, I will just test you. From the time, in verse 16, the Bible says, since those days, when one came to a heap of 20 ephahs, and there were but 10. You left 25. You came back and met 10. When one came to the wine vats to draw 50 baths out of the press, but men met 20. I struck you with blight. And we milled you and healed and in all the labors of your hand, yet you did not turn to me. Okay? In verse 18, consider now from this day forward. So look at your neighbor and say, consider now from this day forward. <laughs> from the 24th day of September, ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Verse, verse 19. Is the seed still in the bud? As yet the vine, the, the, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have not yield, yield, yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. Amen. I say from this day, when you decided to obey, when you decided to let go of relationship that is not of God, anything God is putting a finger on, I pray in the name, from today, God will bless you. Amen. In verse 20, verse 20, again, the word of the Lord came to Agai. Now, read the rest at home. I pray in the name of Jesus. 
anything that the enemy has done to severe your relationship with God or to make sure that his will comes to pass in your life will never flourish. Amen. Will never flourish. Amen. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 and 13. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 and 13. Hallelujah. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. Amen. The heavens to give the rain to your land Amen. in its season Amen. and to bless all the work of your hand. Amen. And you shall lend to many nations Amen. and you shall not borrow. Amen. In verse 13, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Amen. You shall be above only Amen. and not beneath. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, in the name of Jesus, as you carefully observe God's word, things will happen for you. In Revelations 12 verse 11, the Bible says in Revelations 12 and verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life unto death. I pray in the name of Jesus, that thing that has come to destroy you, to kill, and to steal from you, from tonight, you overcome by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not suffer loss anymore. I command your heaven to open right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For my things have come to pass. You've struggled. Things have been, been on the spot. Things have not worked. You've, you've encountered promise and fail. But from today, in the name of Jesus, I command let there be a strange open door concerning you. Let things begin to work for you. In Malachi 3.10, the Bible says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour forth such a blessing that there will be no room to contain it. In the name of Jesus, receive that kind of blessing. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no room to contain it. No room to receive it. Now receive a new name. Receive a new experience. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Former things have come to pass. Begin to enter and encounter new things. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When you pray, you will feel God. When you study, you will behold wondrous things out of the love of God. In the name of Jesus. Bondage no more. Bondage no more. Your sleep shall be all right. Your sleep shall be the sleep of the saints. God will give you sound sleep. You will not be troubled anymore. You will not be disturbed anymore. You shall be far from oppression. You shall be far from terror. It will not come near you. In the name of Jesus. God will bless the work of your hand. Struggle no more. Stagnation no more. Never again will you walk like an elephant and profit like an ant. In the name of Jesus. God will help you. I command doors to fling open for you. The God that made a way in the middle of the sea will make a way for you. Let things begin to happen for you. Receive that anointed phone call. Receive that mail. Receive success in that interview. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in tongues if you believe it. Don't mumble. Don't mumble. Don't mumble. Make it loud. Make it loud. Now, if you want to pray at the altar, you can come now. In case you feel, my God, this message is for me. If that's you, come to the altar. Pray! The five ended virtual prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. It's dynamic and it's working. Kashata rabababa. Pray the prayer that must be answered. Pray the prayer that must be answered. Mention some things. Command it to go. Never again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. I prayed so, I preached so you can pray. L listen to me, listen to me. Activity is not as good as understanding what you ought to do. 
You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Elijah went to Ahab to prophesy. It shall rain. Did it rain? No. It did not rain until he put things in place. Before you pray, everything we need to put in place, go ahead and talk to God about it. Put it in place. Don't wait till you get home. Put it in place. Put it in place. Set tool with God. Anything you will do, tell him now. I will do it. I will do it. This is more powerful than noise. Now begin to apply the blood of Jesus now. Apply the blood of Jesus. Make it loud. Make it loud. Take authority. Every failure, every limitation, apply the blood of Jesus. Apply the blood of Jesus on your finance, on every delay. Apply the blood. Any marriage a problem, apply the blood. Are you just looking? Apply the blood. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the everlasting covenant. Apply the blood. Be bold. Don't be afraid. And by the word of their testimony, begin to make declarations. Come on, I can hear you. Make it loud. Be bold about it. Cast not away your confidence. It's good to pray in tongues, but as you are led, make proclamations. Declare. Declare. Command the sickness to be out of your life. Command every stagnation to go. Oh, Money to go, say be gone. Be gone. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. You submit that to God so as you resist, it must flee. Thank you, Father. In Jesus precious name. Every glory that was hidden in the valley of the enemy, let it jump up now. In the he said, consider your way. He said, from now. He said, consider from now. Now I decree tonight, from tonight, let things begin to happen for you. Let people gather to celebrate with you. Let, let your experiences change right now. In the name of Jesus. You that wife. Listen to me. You are here praying. Not for yourself. That God should bless your husband. Kere Baba. Kasa Now I command anything distorting his walk be out right now. Be out right now. Be out right now. In your lifetime, your children will celebrate you. In the name of Jesus, it will never, it will never go the way the enemy planned it to go. In the name of Jesus. Now I command in the name of Jesus, 
let the experiences be different. Let the experiences be different. Receive open doors. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open doors where you go out. Open doors where you come in. Open doors in your business. Open doors in ministry. Doors you fling open. <laughs> There are some of you, in seven days, they will come to you that you have to represent something outside the country. Open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors. Receive your job right now. In the name of Jesus. Any wall of containment, let it be out of your way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Now we have an entire month to deal with this. In fact, we are going to call for fasting and prayer. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Is it not the fasting I've chosen to undo the bond of wickedness? We're going to follow that. We're going to, you know, you don't strike the enemy once. You confirm him dead with another one. Okay? But receive these testimonies with thanksgiving. Yeah. Lift up your hands and receive it with thanksgiving. I want the choir to join me upstage. Just two, three, four, five minutes. Just sing three songs that we're going to dance to. We we'll dance to our victory. Danceable songs. Give it to me.
You're that person that used to see yourself in a dream naked. That glory that you've been stripped of, I command it to be back right now. I command it to be back right now. Your testimony shall make news in your family. It will do them like a dream. I pray for everyone in this place. God has lifted you up. Your former experiences, they are gone forever. Since you have added thanksgiving to this miraculous happenings in your life, whatever you have thanked God for, you never saw over again. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Lift your hands and mention things that you didn't even have time to mention that you believe is yours. Mention. We receive with thanksgiving. In Jesus' precious name we prayed. I pray that as you leave this place, God goes with you. Amen. It's your shama. Amen. Your testimony will not be stolen. Amen. What God has started will be so in your life. Amen. You will see the perfection. Amen. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you. Amen. You will come back with testimonies. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Say to your neighbor, say, surely, surely. His goodness surely. and His mercy we run after you all the days of your world. You will live. You will dwell. You will tarry in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah.